Welcome to another video with me Tanya Ross of TDR Academy of Movement and Therapy. We're going to use some movements, some stretches coming from yoga inspired movements, also from just a great diversity of other stretches and mobilizations to get the joints working and to get the muscles lengthening. So sometimes if you're not getting to move through certain ranges in a day, you can feel stiff in the joints, feel stiff, the muscles don't want to lengthen, the body parts don't want to move there. So sometimes just taking it into these relaxed held positions where you feel a sense of stretch in a certain area can help you to become a little bit more tolerant of those positions when your body needs to move into them. So take it as a gentle stretch, find your level, when we direct you into a certain target area, you can find whether it feels gentle or if you want to add a little bit more strength to the movement to make it feel stronger by going deeper into the position, but never take it to a point where it feels like it's painful. Always work with a stretch sensation that feels like it's a comfortable discomfort and that way your body will get a little bit more of a chance to melt and relax and to take it as a nice relaxed gentle stretch which is the nature of what we're trying to do with this session so don't strive too hard just try to relax and we're going to lead you in just with a little bit of relaxation first of all and that way hopefully get you set up um, into the zone that we want to bring you into so relax get yourself ready um, onto your mat and all the props that you need for this session potentially a pillow or maybe some blocks to sit on but you don't need too much um, and um, yeah certainly you can make this session your own at any way possible any variations are always good as long as it feels good to you so enjoy the session and um, chill out allowing that sense of lengthening through the back of your neck as you're lying there on the floor and you can decide whether it feels comfortable with the neck feeling long, almost reaching away from the tailbone. Do you want to have the legs bent on the floor or do you want to have them long and straight? So you can choose whatever feels better for your own body. Allow as you're lying there the arms to rotate so the palms are facing upwards. And that might mean drifting the hands a little bit out away from the body. Almost reaching and stretching, opening the hands, kind of springing the fingers open and wide, and then letting the arms relax and the hands relax. We're going to do the same with the feet, whether the legs are bent or whether the legs are straight. I want you to kind of pull the toes as if you're pulling them towards your shins, and then scrunch the toes, curling them under. And then again, spring the toes open wide. And then allow the, the legs and the feet and the toes to relax. And with those eyes gently closed, draw your attention to any signs that you hear within your room. Maybe there's music on, or maybe the room is quiet and still. Maybe you notice almost like the signs of electric, whether it's lights on, whether there's other gadgets on. And then allow your attention to drift inside your body. Just to notice anything. Do you feel tensions? Do you feel tightnesses, blockages, anything? What do you feel inside your own body? Stiffnesses? And you really try to listen to any information coming. And maybe you're 
sensing that as the body as a whole. Or maybe you're picking up on something in the legs. Maybe you're picking up on something in the hips. Maybe in through your torso, the tummy, the back, the chest, the shoulders. Maybe you're sensing something in the arms and in the hands. Or maybe in through the neck or the head or even the face. And whatever you notice, take a deep breath in and send the breath into those areas. Feel the breath create open space. And as you breathe out, let the breath slowly leave the body. And it leaves the part that it's left a little bit more relaxed. And we're going to use that sense with the breath that when you feel anything in your body that maybe feels like a tightness or anything that feels like it's just not quite right, send the breath into that area and then as you breathe out, allowing the breath to slowly leave the body to try to soften that area. And then Slowly, I'm going to start to bend one leg up, placing the foot flat onto the floor, and then the other leg. And I still invite you to keep your eyes closed for now. With the legs bent, can you find a little bit more length in the back of your neck? And maybe just giving the head a little rock from one side to the other, feeling that you're just rolling across the bone at the back of the, the skull. Maybe you can feel little indents or different shapes, points or bumps on the back of the bone. And then slowly gravitate it back into centre. And then you can very gently start to open up your eyes. And we're going to draw the knees in for a hug. So as you take those knees in, you can hug them in gently or strongly. And if it feels good, just to take that little rock off the knees side to side, then you can take it there. And then gently place the spine into centre. And to bring it up into seated, you can either take a hold of the back of both knees or maybe the back of one leg. And you're just going to give a little rock to bring it up. And as we do, then you can keep the legs drawn in tight towards you, but with a little bit of a gap in between the knees and the feet. And maybe just hugging around, taking one hold of one hand and letting the head drape down. Almost letting the back just hang back. And take a deep breath in. Send it into the shoulder blades behind you. And as you breathe out, Letting the breath go. Again, breathing into the shoulder blades. Feeling space and as you breathe out, letting them soften. And then just start to slowly lengthen your spine, drawing up into tall sitting. So as we bring it there, we're going to take the hands in behind, just a light support. And we're just going to take a little bit of a, a rock from knee side to side. Just those little bit of hip mobilizations just to start with. Just noticing how the hips move on one side compared to the other. And then easing it up on both sides and then drawing it into center. Now as we bring it into seated, we're going to draw it into butterfly. So drawing the soles of the feet in together and you can take a hold of the toes and that butterfly can you 
be either hazed on in pretty close or they can be a little bit further away just depending on how happy you are at bending the knees what depth you can take them to so nice and tall through the back almost pulling on the toes pulling the shoulder blades down your back rising up tall through the head almost lengthening your sit bones down into the floor and then just again that little soft rock of the knees tiny little bounces just encouraging a little bit of modulation if you like into the, the hip joints and then from there taking a hold of the ankles letting the elbows press down on the legs almost kind of pressing down and out with the elbows to create that little bit of almost kind of traction into the hip sockets and then you can decide if you feel you need to go a little bit further with that whether you try to pull forwards a little and if you imagine keeping that sense of length, if you want to go a little bit further, you might take a hold of the toes again and then starting to draw it forwards. And if it feels good in your body, then you can drop the head and give the head a gentle shake or nod. Try to let it go. And again, if you take a few deep breaths here, imagine the breath is going into the mid back in between the shoulder blades. So it opens that space, maybe even stretches and the out breath softens and relaxes. And then again, deep in breath, opening up the rib spaces between the blades and the out breath softening. And then very slowly from there starting to roll the spine up, finding that length. And as we do, then we're going to just take it forward with the legs into diamond. So again, still keeping the feet in together, trying to sit up tall. So you can decide on this one sometimes, depending on how it feels around your hips, you might need to rock it forwards or else you can just, you know, pull it straight forwards. But as you're rocking or walking it through, try to find a little bit of length and through the back. So you're not kind of slumping in. You're pulling your hips forward. You're pulling your rib cage forward. To find that length, maybe you're able to take a hold of the toes. And once you're there, if that then feels that you can, let the elbows pull wide and allow the head to drape down and hold it. But if you find sometimes that can be a bit of a nervy stretch for some, so if that feels like it's uncomfortable, you can always keep the head more upright, looking towards the feet as opposed to looking towards the mat in between. Deep breath in again, aim it in the shoulder blades, opening and expanding the ribs, and then slowly softening on the out breath. And then softly from there, again starting to lengthen the spine back out of that position and then walking it back upright. We're going to take it just with the legs, so right about hip distance apart again, flattening the feet and taking the fingertips onto the floor behind. And I want you kind of to puff the chest out, almost lifting it up towards the corner of the ceiling above you. And with the fingers kind of turned out, fingers pointing in behind, maybe just that opener at the front of the shoulders, the front of the chest. And breathing deeply, imagine you're breathing into the chest to open and the out breath to soften. Taking one more breath. Okay. We're going to slowly bring you back down onto the floor. So giving yourself enough room on the mat, curling the tailbone under, using hand support if you need to, otherwise taking it down. We're going to bring it into shoulder bridge. So Again, in terms of position, it's finding the width of the feet or maybe the heels aren't underneath the knees, maybe they're a little bit um, further away from you. But I want you to find a position where you feel like you're going to be able to roll nice and gently, rolling it up, finding that length. And then again, slowly rolling back down again. Just nice and gentle. Almost imagining that it's a, a row of pearls, that you're picking one pearl up and then the other 
as you lead in through a line, so all the way up to the top of the, the shoulders. And then same on the way down, you're starting to lead one curl down and the next as you send the tailbone to the floor. So you're going to take another three in through there, again just gently mobilising, rolling and lifting and lengthening at the top, and again slowly rolling and lengthening towards the heels. Taking one final movement, finding your length. And once you find your way back down again, we're going to take that windscreen wiper again. So if you feel like it's more comfortable to have the, the feet a little bit further away, you can. But just that gentle rock one way and then the other. Drifting the knees to the side. Maybe there's a little emphasis on a press down of both knees, which might lift the hip up. It might bring a little bit more of a stretch into the side body. And as you centre them in, take the arms up overhead, find length. Reach the legs long away, allow the rib cage to lift. Full reach, maybe you're reaching through pointed toes and open ankles, or maybe you're flexing the feet to reach all the way through the heels. Take it into that alternating stretch, reaching with the right hand, maybe reaching with the right heel. And then change left hand, reaching away from the left heel. Just opening up that waist. In the side body. Taking one more each way and then find your way into an even centre and float the arms back down. As you do, you draw one knee in. If it's not comfortable to hold the top of the knee, you could hold the back of the thigh as you draw it in so you don't have to take it into a deep knee bend. So you're drawing that knee in, trying to get the knee close to the shoulder. Yeah, and the other leg out can be long and straight, almost reaching through the heel a little bit to find that extra length. And then we're just going to take it into those soft little movements of taking that knee across the body, so maybe you let it drift away, taking it open. Again, just starting to get that little bit of a pull up through the hip, but maybe again into the side body, the waist. And as you take the leg over, if it's the right leg going over, the right arm is out and you're looking to your right. Not forcing it, just a natural rock again across the back of the, the skull. Deep breath in to the waistline. And out breath, softening it down. What else? Can you kind of melt into the floor through the back, the ribs? And as you slowly return back into centre, almost kind of drawing the belly button in to return to centre, you're going to switch the hands, you're going to take the knee open to the side. So whether you need a little bit of support underneath or whether you're using the hand to press on top, the other hand can be pressing onto the, the grounded leg to almost help keep that hip down, maybe even reaching with that straight leg just to help keep the pelvis a little bit more stable as you try to bring that knee towards the floor. And it's roughly knee level with the hip as it comes out to the side. Trying not to let the back really arch off, almost taking a little bit of a draw in through the belly button again. And then slowly take an in-breath. And as you breathe out, draw in through the tummy to help draw the knee back into centre. And we're going to then take that knee slightly to the outside of the body as you draw it in. We're going to take it into like a half a happy baby. So as the knee goes slightly to the outside of the body, the arm on the same side is going to try to take a hold either around the inside of the heel or the outside of the, the ball of the baby toe. Somewhere around there, okay? If that feels like it's too much, you could use a strap around the foot if you have one handy. But we're trying to come into that happy, happy baby. If it's too strong with the leg on the floor in that straight position, if it helps to get into position, you can bend the leg on the floor. So the knee is outside the body line. You're trying to get the shin on the vertical. 
You're trying to put a direct straight line force pulling down through the leg to try to draw that knee closer towards the floor. The other knee, if it's bent, might feel like it drifts out to the side, and that's fine because I want you to keep your pelvis stable. But if the leg is straight again, it's just trying to reach it nice and long to find what feels like an appropriate level of stretch for you in around that, that hip area. And come back into your breath, that sense of breathing into where your body is talking to you. Where do you feel it? And as you breathe out, can you find a way of softening? Taking one final breath there. And then slowly drawing the heel in as if you're pulling your heel in towards your center and then popping the foot back down again. So we're going to take it over on to the other side. Okay, so again, that first position, just drawing the knee in for a hug. Maybe you're pulling in behind the knee, maybe you're pulling on top, depending on how that feels. You're lengthening out through the other leg, reaching maybe through the ball of the foot or through the the heel, just to try to keep the, the pelvis centered. Then we're going to take the leg across the body. So you can allow the knee to go above the hip and then starting to take the leg across and through. And as you take it across the body, if it's the left knee going across, the left arm is out to the side and your head is looking to the left. Again, just rocking across the back of the, the scalp there. And just pausing. Again, breathing in to where you feel any stretch, any tightnesses, any tensions, whatever you feel. And then as you breathe out, what can you soften and melt into the floor? And then taking one final breath there. And as you breathe out, draw the belly button in to help draw that leg back into center. And then you're gonna continue with that knee out to the other side. So you might switch the hands again and either the hand is being used to support the leg so it doesn't go too low to the floor or maybe the hand on top to help press it to the floor. Once it's there again, the straight leg is lengthening down through the heel or through the ball of the foot and maybe the other hand is resting on top of it to help Give you that sense of whether you feel like you're in a straight line. Breathing to help soften and relax. To help encourage more of your body to connect to the floor. And then slowly again after the next in breath. On the out breath, draw the belly button in, slowly drawing that leg back into center. And as we bring the leg up, so again, if it feels like it might be an easier way to go about it, then you can bend the other leg. You're gonna bring the same side hand up, take a hold either of the heel to come into this half a happy baby, or maybe again, your arms to the inside of the knee and you're taking the outside edge of the, the, the baby toe, the ball of the foot there on the side of the foot. Shin is on the vertical, you're trying to pull the knee down to the outside of the body. And once you get into that position, if you feel that it's an option to you to either straighten that leg, or maybe you stay with the bend so you find your own level. And again, keeping that focus, we're trying to use this to help relax the body. Whatever tensions, tightness, anything that you feel in the body, what can you let go simply by the power, not only of your breath, the power of either visualization and just your thoughts. And 
What can you feel more connected to the floor as you breathe out? Taking one final breath there. And then slowly starting to draw that heel closer towards your centre as you draw it in and then release the foot down onto the floor. So from there then just to open up through the front of the hips again take it into a full body stretch reach the arms up and over reach long through the legs maybe if it feels good to you to do that alternating stretch again reaching one foot away from the hand whatever feels good just to open up the front of the body from there. And then when you're ready, slowly float the arms back down and we're going to draw the knees up bent. So we're going to take it into a cross-legged position, that secretary, secretary seat stretch. So you're into cross-legged and the knees are quite closely packed together and just drawing in for that little bit of a hug. So it's just bringing the stretch again around that glute area. Again, just allowing the shoulders to relax. Imagine that you're lengthening your tailbone, maybe even inviting a sense of almost arching through the back by dropping the tailbone more into the floor. And that might feel like it pulls your legs a little bit away from you as you drop the tailbone down. And just to see, does that change where you feel it? Does that feel good to move into that? What more can you connect and melt into the body? And then from there, we're going to start to bring it into a twist. Now you can either keep the legs where they are, or if you prefer to take the, the bottom foot towards the floor, so you can kind of explore this. When you take the leg, the leg that's closest to you across the body, similar to that previous stretch, whether the legs stay in the air or whether you take that foot to the floor to open up again through that outer hip and into the side body again. So if the legs are drifting over to your left, the right arm is out and you're looking to your right and you can use that left arm for support. Lengthening through the spine lengthening through the knee out of the hip socket. Breathing deeply to allow the body to sink softly into the floor. very slowly from there take a deep in breath and as you breathe out imagine you're drawing the belly button in you're going to roll it back keeping that bottom foot on the floor as you come back but we're then going to continue, continue with the legs over to the other side now you might find as you come over that the knees want to drift up a little bit and maybe they get to the floor maybe they don't the arms are open wide or maybe the hand on the same side again is helping in some way but otherwise, if they're tightly packed, they're probably helping themselves to try to stay in position if you can. And that's going to draw it into the other hip. <laughs> and again, maybe the head is looking to the opposite side. All of these are maybes because you can choose what you add on, what feels good. It's always good to fill your way into experiment. You're trying to find a way with these positions to challenge the edge of the stretch but to breathe and to be able to soften and become a little bit more tolerant of the position. So maybe the next time you visit it, you don't feel as tight. You're not aware of as much tension. We're going to take one more breath. And as you breathe out again, that notion of drawing the belly button in, maybe even push in with the hand into the floor on that same side of the legs and draw them back in. And we're going to pop the feet down onto the floor. 
And then maybe even just taking that windscreen wiper move and again, sometimes it's nice just to reset in between. Just invite a little move and back. So a few to each side and then we're gonna slowly draw it in on the other side. Yeah, so we're going to cross it over. Okay, so you're tightly packed in with the legs again. And once you draw them in, that hug of the knee. And maybe as you're resting there, you're kind of letting the weight of the thighs drop down to make the back of the pelvis feel heavier and more connected to the floor. And as you're holding <coughs> there, imagine that you're trying to lengthen your tailbone. Again, almost that sense of maybe inviting a little bit of arch into the lower back, but it's very controlled, very small, just to see if that adds a little bit of stretch in an area that feels like it needs it. Continuing just to allow the normal length of breath, but allow it to be slow. And then we're going to start to gently bring it into that first twist. So if it's the left leg that up, that's up, you're going to start to bring the legs across to the right. So you can open the arms out. Maybe the right arm is helping to draw the left thigh over. And as you take it across, maybe that bottom leg, the right foot goes to the floor as the legs reach across. Again, opening through that outer hip and up into the side body. Maybe even it's a, a chest opener with that back arm out to the side. And as those knees are over to the right, the head looking towards the left. And as you breathe in, where do you feel you need to direct your breath? And as you breathe out, can you soften and connect more of your body to the floor? We're going to take one more breath. And then slowly engaging the belly button pulling in. To help you draw back, you can keep that foot on the floor as you recenter the body. But then as we do, whether you stay on the floor or whether you lift the legs up, we're taking them across to the other side. It might feel like you want to lift them up that little bit higher. But again, as you take them across, try and leave the arms open. If the legs are going to the left, then the head is looking to the right. Imagine that breath is moving inside the body where you feel you need to tap the breath into. And the out breath, what can you soften into the floor? Gonna slowly take another deep in breath and as you breathe out draw the belly button in and then slowly trying to recenter the spine again allowing the feet to place onto the floor and gently taking it into those windscreen wipers again just to again mobilize around those hips and soften the body down Once you even it up, take again that full body stretch, reaching it up, lengthening the arms up overhead, reaching the legs nice and long. 
So you're getting that full stretch, the rib cage lifting up, opening through the front of the hips. And again, you can decide, does it feel good to reach that alternating stretch? Kind of final stretch, opening up the sides of the body, just to get that notion again, where it feels tight in the hips or the side body. That final little lengthener through those. And then when you're ready, you can float the arms down by your sides. As you're lying there, we're gonna take that first stretch and we're gonna lie, maybe just placing a pillow underneath the shoulders to start opening up through the chest. So if you have a pillow handy or a block, whatever you've got, I'm going to place it underneath that upper back section. If you feel that you need a pillow in through there for the head as well, if it doesn't feel nice to have that throat opener. Now in that position you can choose to have the legs out straight. Or maybe you want to have the legs bent and opening them up into butterfly. Soles of the feet together, knees drifting out to the side. And the arm options can be either down by your sides, open out to the sides, maybe into this I surrender position, or maybe they're somewhere overhead. So you can decide where they go, whatever feels the most useful to you. And it's trying to see, can you soften into that position? And with the breath, the deep breath, moving into the chest. I can't get my leg. You can't walk through it. I can't get my leg down. So allow it to go wherever it wants to. If it wants to be straight, it can be straight. Yeah. It's finding whatever works with it, whatever works and helps it to feel as relaxed as you can. So as you're finding your way into that position again, that notion of relaxing. So even though you're lifted on the pillow, I want you to get that in breath. And as you breathe out, that sinking into the pillow, sinking into what you're molded around. We're going to take just one more breath here. And then after that, then you can start to bend the legs up a little. Bring the arms down and just rolling onto your side and you can remove the, the pillow or whatever you're using the block from there. So we're going to take a few sweeping movements with the arms. So you can rest with the legs bent if that helps you to stay in place. So we're going to take the arms through that straight line, reaching all the way up. And then we're going to open them into that eye surrender position. And you're trying to keep the backs of the elbows and the backs of the hands on the floor. Then as you move them down, the elbows are lowering by your sides. You're still trying to keep the backs of the hands on the floor and then sweeping the hands down by your sides. So you're lifting up through the center line. Opening wide to eye surrender, palms to the ceiling. Trying to sneak the elbows down by your sides as the arms reach down there as well. So we're going to take another two of those. Just noticing the differences maybe between both shoulders. Do they both move quite cleanly? Or is there a bit of, is there something a bit sticky going on in the, the shoulders? Going to reverse the movement. Once your arms are down by your side again, we're going to reverse it. So you're going to think about keeping your elbows by your sides as you move the elbows, or sorry, the arms out. Then coming up through that I surrender position, reaching them up overhead, trying to keep the arms close to the floor, and then down through that center channel. So again, elbows by your side, moving, rotating the forearms out, coming up into I surrender, sweeping it all the way up. And then down the center line. So two more through there. This is just softly mobilizing. Reaching and finding that length. So again, last movement. And then once you're finished from there, we're going to bring it with the hands coming in behind. So we're going to place it up behind the back. Okay, so you can decide how far is far enough for you, and then we're going to bring the body weight on top of it. So 
Obviously, the higher up the hand goes, the stronger that's going to be when your body weight comes down onto it. So you can play about with it if you need to adjust it. Wherever you can go, and once you get the hand in place, it's a little bit harder to adjust, but you could wiggle your body weight down a little bit if you need to. But once you're into that position, you're trying to let that shoulder soften and melt. And again, this is where maybe using your breath to direct it into the shoulder. And what can you soften in through there? And deep breath in. Sending it to where you feel you need it to go. And on the out breath, trying to melt as much of the body into the floor as you can. And on each separate level, you might notice that each right breath you maybe drop a layer of tension in one area. Maybe that exposes something else as being a little bit tight in and around the shoulder. So each time you take an out breath, can you soften another layer down into the floor? And then slowly, whenever you're ready, take one more deep breath in. And as you breathe out, then you can roll away from that hand and slide the hand down and then maybe just a little bit out from the body. So we're going to take it straight over onto the other side. So again, sliding the hand up the back to wherever you can get it. And then allowing the, the body to rest again on that, that hand. Maybe there's a wee bit of rejigging that needs to be done once you're there. But once you draw yourself into position again, can you let the elbow drop? Can you let the shoulder drop? Can you let the arm go as loose as you can possibly make it? And again, that's picking up on any tensions that you may be feeling in through the shoulder and using those breaths, breathing in. And then as you breathe out, can you melt a layer of tension away? And again, those breaths in, using a few breaths. Targeting yet another layer of tension each time. To let it sink into the floor and to let it release. And each time you might feel that you've let go of a little bit more. Is there a little bit more to go? We're going to take one final deep breath there. And as you breathe out, rolling away from that arm and then slowly releasing the hand back down. So just letting the arms open out to the side. And again, once you open them out there, then we're going to just give them a, a little like a tense and release, a tense and release through the hands, just in case it feels like they've been kind of squashed a little bit through there, maybe a little bit of loss of blood flow. Just a few little open and closes, and then rest the arms back down. Okay, so we're going to take a hold of the knee, whether it's under or over, and we're going to bring you up into seated. Okay, so we're going to start to draw it in to a little bit more of the upper body work. So if you feel it's comfortable to sit cross-legged, or maybe if you want to sit on a couple of blocks or pillows or whatever, if it feels like it brings you up, that makes it a little bit more comfortable. So, and in terms of the, the knees and things, so if it feels comfortable just to sit with the legs out long and straight, that's also an option. So you can choose what way is comfortable for you to sit. So draw yourself into whatever position feels good to you. Okay. And we're going to take the arm across the body. As it brings it across, you're going to hug it in. And you can decide once you take it in there, where does that feel? What, what are you sensing around that outer shoulder? And if it feels like you want to progress this one a little bit, you can pop the hand onto the back 
and maybe again dropping a little bit more pressure into that elbow to press it in behind you. Take a deep breath in and then slowly release, taking it open, that stretch and open. So then taking it across onto the other side. So again, maybe it's that straight arm as you hook under to pull it in close. We get that outer shoulder. And as you take the arm in across, again, figuring out where do you feel it. And if it feels that it might be a little bit different, you can pop the hand onto the back and draw it in. So just whatever it feels like gives you, again, that sense of a better stretching through there. another deep breath in and as you breathe out releasing the arms and taking them open a little stretch in behind with the arms so we're going to bring it into eagle arms so maybe bringing the right arm across first and give yourself a little bit of a hug drawing it in and again just whatever position feels best for the legs so elbows are kind of connected together and then we're going to try to pivot those forearms more towards the vertical. If that feels like it's a struggle, you can always put a strap in between the hands to hold them together, or you can stay in that, that hug position, then try to bring them up. So once you're in that position, I want you to get a sense of, do you need to alter it slightly? So in there, can you sit up nice and tall through the back? Or maybe, can you bring the elbows up a little bit higher? And again, they're all maybes because they're add-ons and you can decide if it feels appropriate in terms of the level for you to add that on. Take a deep breath and send it to where again you feel those tensions. We're gonna take one more breath. And as you breathe out, slowly unfolding and then reaching down and back just to open up through the chest. So that was right arm on top. So when, then when we come in for that hug, the left arm is on top, reaching those arms around as far as you can. It's like the biggest hug you can give yourself. And then from there, if you're pressing the elbows together to help pivot the forearms up wherever you can get to, whatever you can grab, or if you can get to the forearms. And again, nice and tall with the spine. And deciding, does that feel like that level is enough for you or do you feel like you need to add in to bring it in to allow those elbows to lift a little bit higher? Breathing deeply. taking one final deep breath there and as you release then slowly allowing the arms to sink down and again reaching them open so from there just give the shoulders just a few little rolls and now we're going to bring it into the chest so if you're sitting on any blocks or any pillows or anything, you can pop off them just to bring the hips onto the floor. And we're going to have the legs just out in front comfortably, wherever they feel, again, that they're most at ease. Fingers are going to point towards the toes, so we're going to bring a little bit into the front of the shoulder after closing that down. So the sense of lifting up through the chest again, almost kind of puffing the chest up to the ceiling. So in that position, if you push the arms a little bit straighter, you're gonna feel like it brings the stretch into the forearms, okay? So you can choose the level of that, just also in terms of wrists if they're happy to go there. So you're puffing out the chest, maybe even sending the breath into the chest so that it helps to expand just that little bit more. And just wherever the head feels more relaxed. And then you can start to blend that in by bending the elbows 
And as you do, it's going to change the stretch a lot, not into the forearms as much, but into the chest, the front of the shoulders a little bit more. And those deep breaths again. And then slowly from there, just allowing the body weight to come forward. And then we're going to switch it so that the fingers are turned pointing backwards. The narrower the hands are, the stronger it is, the wider they are, the softer. So we're going to use a little creep away from it. So you're still kind of lifting the chest. And then you're going to start to kind of rock one hip forward, pulling your body weight forwards away from your hands. Trying not to collapse into the shoulder, still trying to keep that lift. So it keeps into the front of the shoulders and it might start to move down into the arms as well. So you can choose how far you go. When you find that desired level of stretch in those target areas, you're still trying to keep the chest lifted. If it feels like it's going heavy into the elbows, imagine that you're almost trying to kind of pull the heels of your hands towards your hips and that might take it out of the elbows a little. Again, breathing deeply into the chest. And the out breath, softening down. We're going to take one last breath there. And as you breathe out with one leg, reaching it forward to pull the weight off the arms. And as we come forward into that position again, maybe just making that fist, opening the fingers out, just that little bit of getting the circulation going again. And then we're going to take a hold, just a round out through the back, just taking a hold of the outside edges of the feet. The feet can be apart. And as you're holding in through there, maybe your feet are pushing forward into your hands as your ribs are pulling back to round out. And allow the head to rest forwards and down. So you're softening through the head. The elbows can almost feel like they're pulling wider, even maybe pressing your knees out against your elbows to press them a little bit wider. So it feels like it pulls the shoulder blades apart and hopefully brings that stretch in between that mid back, between the blades, even maybe a little bit lower or right across the back of the shoulders. Again, that deep breath. Opening up the rib spaces and the in breath. Feeling that it gets all those areas expanding and opening, the out back softened, almost relaxes down. And then taking one final breath there. And then slowly as you breathe out, releasing the hands from the feet and just rolling the spine up into a lengthened position. So we're going to bring it into the neck just to, to finish with. So again, get yourself into what feels like a comfortable position, wherever that is for you. Cross-legged, butterfly, legs straight, whatever, whatever feels like it's better for you, okay? So we're gonna bring it into a side bend with the, the neck. So we're gonna use one hand reaching up and over. So your fingers are gonna kind of curl in. Maybe it's curling in just around the, the bone of the scalp. Okay, just where it meets the neck in behind the ear. So you're not cranking your neck down to the floor, you're lifting it up and across and over. So imagine you're finding that extra space. And as you hold it in through there, take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, if you can soften in some way, you can decide whether you add in a little bit of rotation, almost looking underneath the armpit of that lifted arm. So you can decide if you add in a movement into that. And again, wherever you're pulling, does it feel like you can assist the movement to help the neck relax as you hold? Deep breath in. And as you breathe out, 
soften anything that you can in your body. And then slowly, whenever you're ready, and another deep breath, as you breathe out, release the hand, and then you can use the hand just to assist you to come up into a long neck position. Sometimes necks don't like to always be stretched quite strongly, so it's taking caution with that. So we're going to take it onto the other side. So again, the fingers hooking in somewhere, but maybe behind the ear, just onto where the bone meets the, the muscles of the neck. And then again, you're lifting up, across, and over, taking it into that stretch. So you're not cranking down on the neck, you're finding lift. That deep breath. And on the out breath, what can you soften a little bit more? And then if you want to add in a little bit of rotation, if that feels good. Again, where does it tweak the stretch in the neck? Does it feel like it's a, an area that needs it? Breathing slowly and gently. And very slowly again that deep breath in and as you breathe out releasing the hand and you can assist the head back up just nice and gentle from there then just dropping the chin to your chest and then slowly in breath lifting the chin up to the ceiling and the out breath again chin to chest and as it reaches chin to chest start to circle the right ear towards the right shoulder Back down, chin to chest, left ear to the left shoulder. And again, just a few times going for each. And as you can slowly start to bring the head back down into centre, lifting and lengthening up through the centre of the head. So hopefully going through all of those stretches has made you feel just a little bit more open in each of those areas. Um, it makes you appreciate just maybe where some of those tensions are, but sometimes just taking a pause just to stretch into them with the breath, with the intention, with the visualization, with the imagination, that they might start to, to soften things down a little bit more. As ever, after completing a session, don't do anything mad straight after, but I want you to try to um, just enjoy the sensation for the rest of this evening. And in a sense, I want you to just explore how the body feels different whenever you go to bed this evening. Just to notice if you feel a little bit more relaxed and maybe you sleep a little bit better after that session. So thank you for watching and thank you for joining in with me. If you've been there and taking part rather than just watching with a, you know, cup of tea and a biscuit. <laughs> so whichever works for you, hopefully it has relaxed you. But Enjoy the rest of your evening after completing this stretch the rest of your day. And yeah, if you like what we're producing with our videos, give us a like, maybe leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel to be notified of anything more that, that's coming through. So yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.